Good morning, body. Time for another day. Your alarm goes off, you hit the snooze button, and lay there for a few minutes between the land of wake and sleep known as the hypnopompic state. When you do finally get up, you're groggy and disoriented thanks to sleep inertia. Most of it's shed in 10 minutes, but can sometimes linger for a few hours. During this time, your body temperature is still low, but your blood pressure is sharply rising. There's a 50% increase in the stress hormone cortisol pumping through your bloodstream in preparation for the stresses of your day. Time for a shower. It's also the best time to shave, as clot-forming platelets are most abundant right now, making your blood more sticky, meaning less bleeding from cuts. But it's also the time of day when heart attacks most often occur. 7.30 a.m. swings around and it's time for coffee and breakfast. Enjoy the smell before sipping though. 75% of how we enjoy flavor is not through the tongue but through smell. The vapors pass through your mouth, around the soft palate, into the nasal cavity, and to the olfactory bulb. Mmm, that's good. Settling in at work and your mental activity is actually at a peak in late morning. Most of us are sharpest two and a half to four hours after waking, but your memory is impacted as the day moves on. In the morning, we forget an average of five facts, but by afternoon, we forget around 14. Not if you're a young adult, though. In fact, the reverse is true, with young people becoming more mentally alive in the afternoon and evening. But at night, our biological clock seems to turn off proteins involved in forming long-term memories, which is why it's best not to cram for a test all night. It's noon and it's time for lunch. Your stomach is able to expand as much as two and a half pints to receive a meal. Here it stays for a few hours before it's sent to your small intestine. We digest meals without even thinking about it. In fact, there's a brain of sorts in your belly called the enteric nervous system, which performs everything from sensing nutrients, measuring acids, and coordinating the immune system to defend your gut. Around 2.30 p.m. and lunch has left us a wave of fogginess and fatigue. After a meal, your body has a short boost in energy from the glucose, but is then followed by a wave of insulin, the hormone that transports sugar to your cells. Scientists believe that insulin might pull too much from your blood, causing an energy nosedive. However, this phenomenon occurs even if you don't have lunch, which has led to much research on the power of naps, which increase productivity and safety. 4.30 p.m. and it's time to hit the gym. Though many try to work out in the morning, studies suggest that you may gain 20% more muscle strength by working out in the afternoon. Your airways are more open, your heart works more efficiently, and your reaction time is at its peak. Much of this has to do with your core body temperature peaking later in the day. Even most sports records are achieved between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Now you start off the evening by joining some friends for drinks. During cocktail hour, you're actually more tolerant to the effects of alcohol. In one study, those drinking vodka at 9 a.m. had significantly worse reaction time and psychological functioning than those who had had the same dose at 6 p.m. It's around 8.30 p.m. now, and you catch someone's eye in the bar. Most of our mammalian ancestors have had ways of advertising their fertility. It turns out that human women also give cues when they're ovulating. In fact, when looking at pictures of women, studies show men find women in the fertile phase to be more attractive. You ask each other to dance, which brings you close enough to get a whiff. After all, your sebaceous and apocrine glands release scents through the armpit which potential partners may find attractive. And because humans walk upright, the armpit is the ideal body part to disperse scent. It's 11 p.m. now, which is the most popular time for sexual activity, which has little to do with our bodies and more to do with societal schedules. In fact, levels of testosterone are much lower in the evening and peak at 8 a.m., while semen quality is best in the afternoon, with 35 times 10 to the 6 more spermatozoa per ejaculation. As such, couples hoping to conceive have better chances with midday sex than during the midnight hour. As you go to sleep and finally begin to drift off, melatonin is secreted by the pineal gland, which begins begins the sleep cycle, which happens multiple times through the night. A change from alpha wave drowsiness to lower frequency theta brain waves signify early sleep. And as your sleep deepens, your brain moves to longer delta waves. For children, sleep is the time in which 90% of bone growth occurs. Finally, as you move into REM sleep, your brain is as busy as it was during the day, firing theta waves with bursts of alpha and beta. Though dreams occur in all stages of sleep, it's during REM that our dreams are most vivid and intense. Recent brain scans have shown that neurotransmitters like serotonin, histamine, and noradrenaline are shut off at this point, turning off reason and logical sense of time, which explains some weird dreams. We dream for an hour and a half to two hours each night, meaning you spend about six years vividly dreaming over your lifetime. In the middle of the night, your body actually wakes up periodically in something called microarousals. These can last only seconds, but occur between 200 to 1,000 times per night. 
Though most of us in the Western world sleep in all one go, many past cultures sleep was broken up into two periods with social activity in between. Some studies have even shown that we have two distinct four-hour natural sleep periods, which in the past would have lasted between 8 p.m. to 12 a.m., and then again from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. By 4.30 a.m., your body temperature is at its lowest and your sleep continues to move through the cycle. In a few hours, it'll be, good morning, body. Time for another day.